Hey, what's up guys? I'm Wally from Crypto 10G. I got the iPhone 10 here. I know for a fact a lot of people call it the iPhone Next, but it doesn't matter. So I got it from Amazon late in November and it's arrived about two weeks ago. Back in November when I made a purchase, I had to pay $1,300 and it was too much for a phone, even at the official $1,000 price tag. It's still way too expensive. And I'm gonna be honest here, this phone is overpriced. Maybe $700 to $800 would have been perfect, maybe. I'm sure you're familiar with the specifications, you've watched several other reviews of the iPhone 10 on YouTube, so I'm definitely not going over the specifications. But first I have to say this, I really like this phone. Even with all the shortcomings, it's a great phone, it's pretty nice and I absolutely love it. With the home button gun, I thought it would be difficult to adjust. Over this past 7 years, I've honed the iPhone 3G, the iPhone 3GS, the iPhone 4S, the iPhone 5S, the iPhone 6S Plus and the iPhone 7 Plus. And it's been the same old run on button. With the iPhone 10, I was surprised I got the hang of it in just about a day or two. Maybe it's because I've watched quite a number of iPhone 10 videos before actually getting it. And the funny thing is, I started applying iPhone 10 gestures to the iPhone 7 Plus. That's how quick you get used to it. As a matter of fact, I don't use the on button any longer. Navigating the iPhone 10 is easy. Swiping across the bottom bar lets you easily switch between applications and this is definitely one of my favorite features. I use it quite a lot. Now, swiping up and then to the right shows you the regular app switcher, but then you have to press and hold to end applications. Maybe that extra step could have been avoided by applying 3D touch and then swiping up. Navigating without a home button is quite easy and you get used to it real quick. But this new user interface can be pretty annoying sometimes. Like you have to swipe down from the top left to see the battery's percentage, VPN connection status and some other useful information you would normally see on the status bar. But these things are things you get used to with time if the iPhone 10 is your daily driver. As for the build, the iPhone 10 is actually smaller than the iPhone 8 Plus and I guess quite a lot of people should be able to use it with one hand compared with the previous Plus models, unless of course you have super small hands. The glass build is fragile. And except you love to live dangerously, you should probably get a case. I'm not gonna wait and watch it slip out of my hand and then pay over $500 to repair it. I've got a rugged transparent case for this from MoSafe. You can find the link down in the description. It's transparent, it's shockproof, and I like it. The iPhone 10 feels solid in hand though. It's heavier than the iPhone 8, but not as heavy as the iPhone 8 Plus. But I would have preferred if it was bigger. A 6.2 inch screen like the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus would have been perfect for someone like me. And the stereo speakers sound very good, it's got some bass to it, and it's the kind of sound you would expect from a thousand dollar smartphone. The speaker placement is brilliant, you've got one here at the bottom, the other grille is actually for the microphone. The second speaker is front facing and it's integrated with a hairpiece. The iPhone 10 has one of the best displays out there, it's the first time Apple is putting an OLED display on the iPhone even though it's been on the Apple Watch for a while now. The display is what you would expect, it's crisp clear and well saturated. You have a 2436 by 1125 pixel resolution on a 5.8 inch screen. The iPhone display is finally catching up with Samsung phones. P3 color gamma support is a great addition, but not everyone is going to find true tone display useful. Um, personally, I've left it turned on since day one and it's still on, and I kind of like the automatic white balancing. Still on the display, the only problem with it is the same thing everyone is complaining about, the notch. It cuts off part of the display, but the truth is, you get used to it with time. In portrait mode, you don't even know it's there. It's a lot less annoying than I assumed, but in landscape mode, it can be a problem when you're playing games or watching videos. At this point, I can only speak for myself here. I mostly watch videos on the iPad Pro and my gaming happens mostly on my PS4 console and the iPad Pro. So I hardly use the iPhone 10 in landscape mode, but if you do, you might really hit that notch. But then, Apple thinks you're gonna get used to it and I wouldn't be surprised if it becomes the iPhone signature for the next 10 years. Now, Face ID might be a new experiment for Apple but it works pretty well. I'm sure you already know it's very different from the regular face unlock you have on existing devices. When it comes to picking up an existing idea, modifying it and making everyone else look stupid, Apple is brilliant. Instead of using your regular camera to take a picture of you, a 3D scan of your face is what the phone uses so it doesn't get fooled by a picture. This is done by bouncing several infrared dots in your face. This works with artificial intelligence so the phone keeps learning about your changing face. I wish I could shave my beard to experiment but nah. Anyway, whether you're smiling or frowning or you've got your face twisted in a weird way, the iPhone still knows it's you. You can make it attention aware. 
This will let Face ID unlock your phone if you're, you know, like looking away. Or if you're sleeping and someone brings the phone close to your face, it's not gonna work. And for me, it works in pitch darkness or bright sunlight. It's pretty convenient logging into applications with keychain just looking at your phone. But there are times I really miss touch ID, like when you're sitting, the phone is on the table and you have to lean forward or pick up the phone before Face ID works. Apart from this, the success rate is almost, almost as good as touch ID. You're gonna hate Face ID only if you have an evil twin. And if you think it's lower than touch ID, you're probably waiting for the lock icon to change before swiping up. You don't have to. The camera is great, it's amazing, but don't get too excited about portrait mode on the iPhone 10. It's still nothing compared to what a DSLR does. And portrait lighting is still very much a work in progress. Actually, it's really bad. And I hope software updates fix this. However, it's a good thing you now have optical image stabilization on the wide angle lens and the telephoto lens. It's a good thing you can finally shoot in 4K at 60 frames per second. It's also nice to be able to customize the video settings and choose your desired resolution and frame rate. To an average user, the iPhone camera quality is still pretty much the same as the iPhone 7 Plus, but the iPhone 10 seems to have a better dynamic range and I think it gives less noise in low light. Hand emoji was the biggest feature of the iPhone 10 when it was launched, and if you're big on iMessage, you're probably gonna like it. When I got this phone, it was fun making weird faces just to see what I was gonna look like as a unicorn or as a big brown poop. I even did my own animoji karaoke, but the whole animoji thing wore off after a while. But then, it's the best way to tell people you've upgraded to the new iPhone 10 if you're into that sort of thing. Battery life on the iPhone 10 is good. I mean, normally your never user should be able to get through the day without charging. Based on my experience and use pattern, I'm very satisfied with the battery life. But then, you can drain it in 6 hours if you're recording 4K videos or playing graphic intensive games. And it's gonna heat up. I guess that's normal. Other high-end devices in the market already have wireless charging and, as usual, Apple is late to the party. But it's a good thing it's on the iPhone now. That explains the glass back cover. The A11 Bionic chip on the iPhone 10 is a monster. The performance is crazy and with just 3GB of random access memory, the iPhone 10 now outperforms every existing smartphone on the market. The benchmark results prove this. On Geekbench 4, the iPhone 10 scores over 4000 in single core processing and over 10000 in multi core processing. It's the highest in smartphone has ever scored on the platform. It's the same on Antutu, over 200,000 points. Real life performance is outstanding, multitasking is great and overall, this is definitely the smartest phone in the market right now. Well, iOS 11 is still pretty much the iOS we all know and not much has changed physically except for the new gestures on the iPhone 10. I'm using iOS 11 on this and it comes with its own little share of issues. There are times when stock applications are just unresponsive like a settings application, this happened like twice over this past week and you have to go to the home screen when this happens to quit the application. Also not all applications support a new iPhone 10 aspect ratio and such applications have black bars at the top and bottom like you use them on an iPhone 8 or something. But developers are really pushing out updates and more apps are supporting the new iPhone 10 aspect ratio. And finally, after years and years of waiting, tap to wake is finally on the iPhone 10. That definitely makes up for the lack of a home button. If you've been watching the video all the way from the beginning to this point, you already know what I think. It's a great phone. It may not be the best phone you can buy right now, but it's definitely the best iPhone you can buy right now. You can still go for the iPhone 8 if you don't care about the old design that's already boring and a lack of a depth sensor at the front for an emoji and portrait mode. But if you're still holding on to your iPhone 7 or an older iPhone, you will be left out on whatever artificial intelligence related projects Apple plans to do with the new A11 Bionic chip. Yeah, we all know it's not a perfect phone. The notch is a reason for some to hate it. The glass back cover is enough reason for some to stick with the iPhone 7. But let's face it, the only real deal breaker here is the price. It's expensive and this phone isn't for everyone. If you don't really need an iPhone or you're not really that into Apple's ecosystem, there are other phones out there you might want to consider. Cheaper phones but still powerful like the Galaxy Note 8. If you're buying this, you already know what you're getting and the price shouldn't be a problem. If you've already invested in Apple's ecosystem, you can do with that iCloud and you think the iPhone is a perfect phone for you, Apple knew you were going to pay that $1,000 when they made this phone. They're not sending all those market survey emails for nothing. Unfortunately, I belong in this category. I went ahead to buy the iPhone 10 despite knowing this. Do I have any regrets? Not really. 
I'm actually keeping the iPhone 10 and getting rid of my iPhone 7 Plus. Now by next year, Apple is probably going to have a better version of this new iPhone design with a bigger screen. They might integrate Touch ID with a display and come up with a new A12 atomic chip that's 50% faster than what's on the iPhone 10. And you know what happens? The iPhone 10 becomes just another old iPhone. That's it, my review of the iPhone 10. If you like this video, please support this channel by giving the video a thumbs up and please hit the subscribe button below. Hopefully, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.